What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about the X-H2, which is the 8K brother to the X-H2S. I'm going to give you my perspective as somebody who shoots videos primarily. Um, how do these two cameras compare? And would I recommend one over the other for videography work? So when these two cameras came out, you know, Fujifilm made it very clear that the X-H2 is a true, true hybrid camera. It is a 40 megapixel sensor. It can still do ProRes. It can do 8K, it can do 6K, it can do uh, an amazing 4K HQ, which I am, which I wish I had in the X-H2S, uh, but we don't have it and it's completely fine because we have a lot of other amazing, way better things, I think, in my opinion, than what the X-H2 can offer. So number one, the bodies are absolutely identical. So the feel of the camera, if you have an X-H2 uh, S right now and you're looking at this camera, they feel the same. The button layout, um, everything is absolutely identical. Second, and the most important thing, the most, the biggest distinguishing factor between these two cameras is obviously the sensor. They, they are both APS-C sensors, but the X-H2S has a stacked sensor, which is 26.1 megapixels, and it can read at a 14-bit depth at 4K30. Now, that is a very, very important thing. That is a feature that is normally in extremely high-end, super expensive cinema cameras. And that's what allows the X-H2S to get 14 plus stops of dynamic range. And the X-H2 has a 40 megapixel non-stacked sensor, which is um, still the X-Trans sensor, the, which gives you the beautiful colors that Fuji is known for. But it is 40 megapixels and it cannot read out as fast as the X-H2S because it is a stacked sensor. It reads out much quicker, more data. 14-bit versus 12-bit. Number three, you do have a few more uh, selections on the X-H2 when it comes to the quality of your footage. So you still have your, your, all of your ProRes options. You have your H.265, H.264, but the X-H2 actually gives you 4K HQ which is a downsampled, which it's a 4K image that's downsampled from 8K and it looks amazing, amazing. If you're shooting with this camera in 4K 24, 4K 30 in that HQ mode and you're shooting in F-Log 2, oh my God, the image looks so good. It doesn't look, when I say so good, that's a very subjective thing, right? So I mean the image isn't digital, it looks like a film image. Now the X-H2S, can, you can get an image like that. Actually, I, in my opinion, you can get a, a little bit better of an image. But this, this, this image looks really, really good. It is very, very sharp, um, not a digital sharp. It is very clean. So I took this camera out two nights ago and I wanted to just shoot in a low light environment because I wanted to just see what the camera can do so I went out, I shot everything in 4K 30 HQ in F-Log2, and uh, here is what it looks like. Check it out. So what did you think about that image? It looks great, right? So the only thing that I would say about the 4K HQ image is that it's very large. So if you have, um, let's say, for example, five hours worth of uh, record time, regular 4K 30 and F-Log 2, whatever. If you shoot in 4K HQ in 30 frames per second, you're gonna have about an hour and a half 
of storage available to you. So it is, it, you know, it is basically like you're shooting 8K. That's all I can say. So the obvious benefits of having this camera over the X-H2S is that you have an 8K image. So you can create a lot of shots with that. You can zoom in four times without losing any, any quality in the image. And that's, that's a big deal. That is nice. Um, I don't think, I think with the 6.2K, you can probably go in about three times and then that's when you're gonna start. And after that, you're gonna start seeing some degradation in the footage. Now, um, just to kind of wrap this up and give you my conclusion on what, which one I prefer, I, I love both of these. I mean, I love the X-H2, I love the X-H2S. But as, as somebody that shoots videos, I will tell you without a doubt, the X-H2S is the way to go. I, I think, I keep, I, I mean, I, I keep saying this and I said this in my last video, I don't think people understand, truly understand, the significance of the fact that this is a stacked sensor. It is a stacked APS-C sensor. No other camera in this price range has a stacked APS-C sensor. That is a very, very big deal. The camera can read out at tremendous speeds. So you can read out at 14-bit. 14-bit means that the camera is capable of comfortably doing 14 stops of dynamic range. And if you watch you know, reviews like Gerald Undone, for example, he did, so he, he did a test of how much dynamic range this camera can get, the X-H2S. And he was able to come to a conclusion that the camera can do at least 14 and a half stops of dynamic range. And he was incredibly surprised and I was incredibly surprised. But then when I started actually shooting the way he did with just noise reduction turned off, the in-body noise reduction turned off, and then you clean it up in post, the footage is just, it is truly, truly spectacular. It's, it's almost like the camera transforms into something else when you're shooting in 4K 30. It's, it, it just, it automatically, you know, goes into this 14-bit readout mode. Anything above that, the camera just goes back to 12-bit readout mode, which is still, it just still, it's a beautiful image, but you're not able to get the full 14 plus stops of dynamic range. Uh, beyond that, uh, the rolling shutter is a big, big deal. So the rolling shutter on, on the X-H2S is significantly better. If you're walking with the X-H2 compared to the X-H2S and you take a step, you'll see the, you know, the little, the jello effect, basically. You don't see that with the X-H2S uh, at all, ever. I mean, the, the camera is just, it's got some of the best rolling shutter uh, you will ever see. So yeah, um, I think that definitely they're amazing. Both cameras are absolutely incredible. But for video, X-H2S is the way to go. Um, so yeah, um, I can, I mean, I can do more comparisons. Just let me know what you wanna see. I do have a Ninja 5. Uh, Atomos Ninja 5, and I just have not had the opportunity to shoot in ProRes RAW. Both of these cameras can do it. They both have the full-sized HDMI uh, port, so they are identical in that sense. I just have not had the opportunity to test that, but yeah, I would be happy to test whatever you guys are interested in, and yeah, if you like the content, I'm going to be making m way more content. Um, I'm, I, I just need to find the time to do it. And yeah, if you like the content, just, you know, please subscribe, please like, and please comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what, how I can improve because I want to improve and I do these videos so I can make better, more better videos. So thank you again for watching the video and see you on the next one.